All right, all right, all right, all right. Okay, we are live. Good morning or good afternoon. <laughs> it's morning here in Colorado and our special guest today for our spotlight um, is Elena San. And thank you so much for joining us today as we go through the month of May in celebration of Asian American and Pacific Islander Heritage Month. And Elena, you and I met uh, in October of 2018 um, as one of 10 Asian American leaders invited by the Consul General of Japan to participate in the Kakahashi program. Um, and we hit it off right away. Um, you are my sister forever. Um, but I want to share just a tiny bit about your resume and who you are. So you are currently the executive director of the American Uzbekistan Chamber of Commerce, the US Kyrgyzstan Business Council, and the US Tajikistan um, Business Council and US Afghanistan Business Initiative. Those are lots of syllables <laughs> for <laughs> um, all of the work that you do. Um, also, I wanted to highlight your experience in business you have been very um, highly sought after in, in private sector business and budgeting and finance. Um, you are very well respected in the American government and you currently work on the rebranding. Um, you're a rebranding ambassador for the Ronald Reagan Building and International Trade Center in Washington, DC, where you currently reside in DC, but you travel um, all over the world, all over the globe as a um, highly sought after speaker. And I just love you so much. And I want you to share a little bit more about what you do. Sure. Well, thank you so much, Sister Priscilla, Sister in, uh, in Denver, Colorado, and hello from Washington, DC. Um, indeed, my name is Elena Son and Priscilla, thank you so much for the introduction. I don't know <laughs> uh, if, um, well, some of that, what you said is extremely relevant to, to, to what I do. And before I begin, I'd like to say happy Heritage Month to, uh, to all fellow Asian Americans and Pacific Islanders. It's a remarkable month, but it's also a month uh, of the mental health. So, and I think during the social distancing, during the quarantine, and since we are in the new norm, it's, our, it's very important to maintain our mental well-being. So I think it's just remarkable that we have two important events at the same time, and they are very relevant to our environment. Uh, like Priscilla said, uh, I work and I represent American companies in Central Asia. Um, these countries, Uzbekistan, Kyrgyzstan, and Tajikistan, were part of the former Soviet Union. Um, and recently, we also added the US Afghanistan Business Initiative. And what we do is we represent these companies and their business in Central Asia, and we help generate more economic gains for the peoples of the United States, as well as the peoples of uh, Central Asia. So it's a, it's a challenging task because Central Asia is thousands of miles away from the US. Not too many people know how to even pronounce these countries, and not even many people even know where these countries are on the map. So which is very important for you to do what? To study at school, learn the geography, look at the map, see where countries are located, so that once you're ready to enter the professional stage, you know what countries you would like to go. And you know the countries, the unknown countries, or the countries that are not so popular for travel and tourism that you would like to go. Although I have to step back because under the new norm, travel and tourism will probably gain something, a, a new form and shape. Um, so on a day-to-day -day basis, what we do is never the same. Uh, we work on companies' issues, we work on, on our 
foreign governments also interest in bringing more American companies and more American expertise to their respective markets. These are new markets. These are markets that are looking at the US, that are looking at American people and trying to upgrade their technology, trying to upgrade the economic development, and most importantly, trying to get the same level of education that American institutions, educational institutions pro to, do provide to uh, American citizens. I think it's uh, one of the best things. And even the healthcare, even during these challenging times, I think that the rest of the world, and especially those countries in Central Asia, do look at the US model of the, of the healthcare. But most importantly, they look at the American companies that work in the cutting edge healthcare technology. And again, there are challenges, but as they say, if you look at the change and you embrace it, it's an opportunity. If you look at the change and you oppose it, it's a challenge. So I think that COVID is a great opportunity for us to grow, to show perseverance, to show uh, patience, and to show our desire to learn and to adapt. And I think that for Asian Americans and Pacific Islanders, this is very relevant. We, we always grow, we always try to adapt, we always try to develop, and we always try to be part of this of the greater society. And I think what I do admire about younger generation right now is that they're embracing, embracing more global society. I see a lot of Asians right now and Pacific Islanders actually joining the workforce and they are eager to travel to countries that we work, that we work in. And I'm very always surprised and impressed by their knowledge of the international affairs of the economics and the business. So just to cut and stop and give Priscilla um, time for, the, for another question, I'd like to say is that, yes, we, I work in the business, um, we work with governments, we work with co uh, companies, and we work with the general public. And so um, I would welcome any questions, I would welcome any requests and any interest in the regions that we represent. So. That's amazing. It's like such high level um, work that you do and such important work that you do. You know, in the United States, our students who are first, second, third generation who grow up in the United States, um, maybe have it spoken to someone who is of Asian descent who grew up um, in another country that's maybe not quote unquote what we expect a, a standard place for you to grow up. So you did not grow up in Korea. You are of Korean heritage, but Correct. you did not grow up in Korea. You grew up in Uzbekistan. Uzbekistan. So share more about the story of how your family immigrated from Korea to Uzbekistan. Sure. Um, well, thank you so much. And again, so I do look Korean. And um, I, my makeup, <laughs> I follow YouTube <laughs> um, <laughs> and Instagram influences on how to put Korean uh, makeup. But it's very true, I didn't grow up in Korea and I don't speak Korean language, so which is very frustrating because when people do see me, they think that I, I'm fluent. And um, But I did grow up in, I was born in Kazakhstan and then my dad and moved our family to Uzbekistan. So how did we end up Koreans, ethnic Koreans in Central Asia? Well, actually, that all started in 1937 when my grandparents who lived in the Far East, uh, in the Far East of Russia, form of Soviet Union, they were forced by uh, then uh, Stalin, who was uh, a father of the former Soviet Union, let's put it like that, a uh, very authoritarian figure, who decided to move um, Koreans, ethnic Koreans, as far as possible from the Far East, and he put them into Central Asia. And so, um, and that's how uh, we ended up being in Central Asia. That's where my parents were born. That's where I was born. And I think that I would like to say, using the opportunity, I would like to say a huge thank you to the peoples of Central Asia, to the Uzbeks, to the Kazakhs, to the Kyrgyz, and to the Tajiks and the Turkmen's for embracing ethnic Koreans back in 1937 and for allowing people who had absolutely nothing with them because we were, my grandparents were given 24 hours to get on the train and be forced and move to the place where they've never heard of. They couldn't bring any of their belongings. They couldn't sell their houses. So they had absolutely nothing. So people with absolutely nothing ended up in the middle of nowhere, um, but they were so well received. And so that's kind of like part of my heritage. But it, uh, going back to kind of like generations of Asian American Pacific Islanders who grow up um, and now the second or the third generation, I think that my, my kind of like, uh, um, desire maybe, or my encouragement to you would be again, adapt. 
think about your, your heritage. It's a, it's a great heritage, respect for elder, desire for education, desire to do well. These are great components, but ho however, do think globally, do try to embrace other people's cultures and do try to be resilient, do try to be part of the society. It's very good. Um, I think that as, a, as someone who didn't grow up in the US, I would say one thing that US is a very individualistic society. It's based on individualism and I think it's one of the best strengths of the US. However, at the same time, we live in a global society. So we have to interact with each other. So. Push your interests first, however, make sure that these interests do not overstep other people's boundaries and also make sure that these interests are work very well with the others. So um, again, think about your Asian heritage, um, value the heritage, value the respect for yourself, for the parents, for the people, for the school teachers and everybody else and for your peers and for, for the bosses. Uh, but at the same time, try again, try to get out of your comfort zone. Um, and uh, yeah, try to create a harmony. I think it's really unique to see some of the similarities of um, our ancestors growing up in different parts of the world, but still some of those um, customs and ideologies that have been ingrained for many, many generations. So like you and I, you know, almost like I tell people, watch Joy Luck Club and you'll get, <laughs> you know, um, where we have our, our parents who are instilling these very strong Eastern customs. Um, and then as we start to live in a Western society, how do we maneuver through some of those cultural norms and mm -hmm. expectations and then code switch in a Western society that's very different? Yes. That is very different. And I think that um, I actually see a lot of that in myself and also uh, when observing other Asian Americans, especially younger generation or people of my age. So um, I think that the word that I'm looking for is assertiveness, right? So in our culture, we respect people of authority, we respect elders. And sometimes in the business environment, there are situations where you want to be vocal, where you want to express your opinion. However, your background, your, your cultural kind of like uh, background and upbringing doesn't allow you sometimes to be vocal and say your own words because you don't want to upset, you don't want to overstep and you don't want to be out of line in trying to bring your, your opinion. And I think this is something that needs to be mastered. It's not something that will come in one day and you will just stand up and you will say, well, boss, so and so, you're absolutely incorrect. No, you actually have to think about this. You have to master with your, maybe your parents how to be assertive. And that's, I see the cultural heritage um, as a plus. And at the same time, in some people, I think it creates kind of like a, a sense of timidness, right? So we are sometimes timid. Do we say something that is, uh, that is that will be more accurate, for instance, that other people say, uh, will this go against my cultural heritage? Will I overstep and whatever? So um, I think it's always a good balance. It's always a very delicate balance, either in our personal relations. Again, I think in personal relations, we think that the husband or the father of the house is, a, is again, as a figure of authority. And we as women, for instance, we try to make sure that we preserve kind of like the family unit by being more, um, not subdued, but being more polite, being more quiet, being kind of like, being, being more, a little bit submissive. And again, it's uh, it's finding it, trying to find a, a good balance. And again, cultural heritage, Asian Pacific Islander heritage is, is huge, it's immense, it's very rich, and it's, it offers a lot to learn from, but we need to master and it's not going to come and it's not going to happen in one day. You need to practice step-by-step, step. Uh, yeah. Well, that's a great segue um, because when we met in Japan, you were actually a candidate running for yes. um, for your city, like um, uh, for my district, for my for my neighborhood advisory neighborhood commission. Yeah, committee commission. Yes. I was so impressed that you you used your voice. You said, "I see something in a problem, and I want to be a voice in my community." And you decided to become a candidate. Can mm -hmm. you? Tell us more about what that journey was like for you. Oh, yes, it was an exciting journey. It was a very tiring journey, and it was also a financially draining journey because when you run for the office, remember this, money is very, very, very important because you need to get the posters, you need to get the, you need to get the graphics, you need to get the design, you need to send uh, to, to post 
on social media um, and street signs and everything else. So we also developed our designed our own T-shirts, right? So um, it's always been my dream to run for for the office, and um, I never had the chance to do that when I grew up in, when I was growing up in the former Soviet Union. But when I came here, um, I began to kind of like embrace and began to participate in uh, in the city um, in the city life. And then there was an opportunity for me to run. And I decided to, that was in 2018. So I decided to run for the advisory neighborhood commission. My district, so my neighborhood is here in the Foggy Bottom. There is a small uh, kind of like a um, area, right? That I decided to represent. And the issues are very, very local. So it's rats, it's homelessness, it's noise, it's um, sanitary kind of like our environment. And it's about safety safety of our own neighborhood. Um, and I think that the reason why I decided to run is because I do not see color. I do not see color, I do not see gender, I do not see any professional kind of like differences or, and whatever. You're my neighbor, you're the person that I would like to represent. And I think that was a great platform. So um, we, we kind of like the campaign and I was very fortunate. I think when we talk about the campaign, money is important, but also having people who think alike, who support you and who drive you and who motivate you is also very important. So my campaign was, it's about us. It's not about me, it's not about you, it's about us. How do we represent, how do we work together? Unfortunately, I didn't win, but it was not, uh, it didn't discourage me. And I think that's another message to the um, Asian Americans and Pacific Islanders and everybody else who is actually watching and, and listening to us. Do not be afraid of the failure. I have failed so many times. Failure is good. Failure actually makes you stronger. Failure actually gives you lessons. And when your parents come and tell you, oh, don't do this because you're going to fail, listen to that advice. They have some wisdom. Try to embrace what they're telling you and try and, and avoid the bigger mistakes, but don't be afraid to fail. Don't be afraid to make mistakes. That's part of life. That's who we are. And the more mistakes you make sometimes, the stronger you will become. So um, I didn't, again, I didn't win, but it didn't discourage me from maybe running again, potentially, I don't know. Uh, but yeah. I do know that you, Priscilla, are running. So. Yeah, I know. You might not have won the election, but you sure <laughs> did inspire me. And I think that's what this is about in this series is when we spotlight different um, Asian Americans and mm -hmm. the work that you are doing to influence your neighborhood and just to do more than, you know, your own internal goals, mm -hmm. but thinking about other people and how you can contribute in a positive way. And I think that's amazing. You... Um, talked a little bit about some advice that you, mm -hmm. you would give. Um, are, are there any other thoughts you might give to high school or college students who are thinking about careers or you have a really unique career? What would you say? I think do study and do listen to your teachers and show respect and do your homework because the fundamentals that you will get in, in, in school will actually serve as your base when you go to college and when you go to professional life. Do not try to kind of like to slack and say, oh no, I'm not going to do my homework. Do every detail right now, every book that you read, every exercise that you do is going to be extremely helpful to you when you are a 30 year old or 40 year old executive trying to develop. Um, I think try to work on your social skills. Uh, on your people to people skills, because that's important. That's how to build relationships. I mean, I know that we have social media, we can post, but it's a one way traffic. I mean, it's me sending message right now to you. I do not have a sense of what you're thinking right now as I speak. You may actually say like, oh, Elena, you're totally incorrect. Try to interact, try to interact with Priscilla. She is excellent. She is great when it comes to personal interactions. Interact with your parents, interact with different people at diff of different levels of different um, ages because that will be your basis for, for becoming a better professional as you grow up. And I think that's just, as I said, school is hugely important. And for the Asian Americans, Pacific Islanders, um, it's kind of like part of life. But again, I hope that this message is listened by so many other people and again, I would just say education and healthcare. I think back in the days when I was in my, I don't know, in my teens and the twenties, I thought like, who cares about the education? Like, no money, right? Good, good job. That's what you need. No, education comes first. Education and, and good healthcare are the two indicators of the health of the state, of any government, of any country, of any society, or the family union. The more educated, the more educated you are the broader prospects you will have. And you can go and do whatever you want when you are an adult. I mean, when you're, um, how do you say, you're a professional adult, right? So. 
We could talk for many, many hours about all of these nuances. Um, but before we go, I want to, I know that you are quite the fashionista. Oh, thank you. <laughs> and your wardrobe. Uh, and so I know that you love fashion and mm -hmm. style and clean lines. Like I can see even your house. It seemed like a beautiful a mix of Asian lines and uh Uzbekistan uh, <laughs> lines and design, but what are you doing right now that maybe you weren't able to do before or something fun that's bringing you joy and helping you to smile? Sure. So I think that there are a few pockets, right, of my life that I enjoy right now immensely. Number one, I do enjoy working from home because I am actually spending time with my parents. So, and um, it's been an incredibly, I think at the beginning, it was a little bit of a challenge. Uh, because we have different tastes, we have different dynamics. I have busy meetings, Zoom meetings, and, and they have their own time. I mean, they want to have breakfast, they want to communicate with me. But this is, I think, this time has turned out to be the best. I, we are much stronger as a unit. I love my parents, and I don't know when else we will have this opportunity where we spend so much time with each other. I'm trying to learn from my parents. I'm trying to understand the history from my parents. I'm trying to understand the, the recipes that my mom uh, has in her, in her mind. Who knows when will be the next time that I will do that. Uh, my other thing is that I enjoy cleaning my house. Before I was busy at work, and kind of like my house and my family and everything else was on, were somewhere in the back burner. Now I enjoy living in the house and I enjoy taking care of that. And like Priscilla, you said, it's a combination of modern, some Asian and some Elena. So when it comes to wardrobe, I also, what do I enjoy? I enjoy the YouTube. I enjoy the Korean makeup, the hair. Uh, there are some influences that I follow that I try. So whenever I have like five minutes of time, I'll go like, okay, let me try and do this. Let me try and do that. I'm very fortunate that I have my sister and my sister has a great fashion sense. So she usually sends me links. I mean, it's not some, someone that we follow, but she's like, look at this dress, look at this dress. So maybe this is something that you have in your wardrobe. And so um, what I do enjoy right now is also I'm, I'm trying to do my exercise and I'm trying to lose more weight so that I'm ready for summer. Me too. <laughs> You too? Okay, so this is very relevant. <laughs> I do not want to come out when we are ready. And I mean, I, I embrace every, again, every body type is great, but I think it gives more confidence to me when I look within the kind of like within the parameters that I feel more comfortable with and it gives me more confidence. Um, but one thing that I, did, I do really enjoy, so I'm also on the commission, Asian American Pacific Islander, um, Affairs Commission. And so uh, with my fellow commissioner, Karen Quark, and with the support from the Moapia, which is mayor's office on Asian American Pacific Islanders, Ben de Guzman and James and Henry, we were able to put the first mental health workshop. And we put this uh, right in the middle of the social distancing, right in the middle of this uh, COVID-19 pandemic, again, trying to maintain our um, mental health being, uh, well-being right in check. And I really enjoy that. We brought uh, great speakers from the uh, DC uh, Behavioral Health Agency. We also brought two other experts, one on personal relations, one on addictions, to talk to actually DC residents about things that we have to be on the lookout, like social skills, kind of like other skills to help us maintain our sanity because we are spending time with lots of people with lots of issues. Uh, some of us have lost jobs, some of us haven't, some of us are trying to kind of like to adapt to our partners, trying to discover the new side of our partners and our lives. Um, and that's kind of like, again, embracing the change has brought so much joy to me. Um, I do not resist, I actually enjoy this time. Uh, I don't think that I'm ready to go out just yet. I don't know, Denver, is Denver, um, are you back to normal or kind of like- uh, no, we're sl slowly, slowly starting to slowly. reopen. Yeah. Okay, well, so our kind of like uh, tentative deadline right now is uh, we are on a lockdown until, stay at home until May 15th, and then we'll see what's going to happen then. But I think it's, it's a blessing. Uh, I really enjoy doing everything that I do. And of course my work. My work, I think, professionally has opened so many opportunities. And that's something that, again, that I would like to maybe, I know we have kind of like a time limit, right? But I'll bring this up. So um, we've always used, because our region, Central Asia, is about 10 hours or nine hours ahead of us. Uh, it's 17 hours away by travel. So we do not always have the opportunity to go like within our, I don't know, within a no day's notice. We can't just, just jump on a plane and go there. So we have to prepare. But we have been utilizing for the last few years, we have been utilizing um, video conferencing, 
WebEx, we've been utilizing Zoom and et cetera. So when the whole thing started, for us, it was kind of like a continuation of the normal path. Okay, let's now switch from, from meetings in person to meetings via Zoom and WebEx and et cetera. And we have started bringing a lot of speakers and we were very fortunate because we work very cool in close partnership with the Asian Development Bank, with the IMF, with the European Bank for Construction and Development, with the World Bank, with the International Finance Corporation, um, with colleagues from the Wilson Center, with our, our members. And so we started the State Department and so many others. And so we started bringing speakers from all these agencies, from all these institutions to educate, to inform our companies about what's going on. What's the impact of COVID-19 on, on the business, on the social aspects, on the finances, uh, on our personal finances as, a, as, a, as a employees, right? But also all, on our country's finances, like where, where do we stand? Uh, are we going to be in a recession, depression or whatever uh, in, in, like, are we heading towards a depression or repression? Uh, reg regression right now, right? So these are very important themes. And I think that I do enjoy that. I do enjoy providing information. I do enjoy providing services to our companies. So it's been very busy. It's been very intense for us, but it's it's been very joyful as well. You are so humble and oh. <laughs> so knowledgeable because you are working um, with ambassadors from all over the globe and um, in the presence of many, many high ranking officials who are making important decisions and it's a, not an easy place to be. And yet you are just so sweet and so generous with your time and loving and caring. And uh, I don't know how you stay that way with all the stuff that you do and you're always refreshed. Maybe it's the Korean makeup that makes you always look like you're <laughs> you have vitality and you're awake. So maybe we do an offline where we do a tutorial, like you can tell me how to do that too. Um, sure. But I, we can, we'll have to do a part two because seriously, I think th there's so much information and experience that you have to share. Sure. Yeah. Yes. I do want to take advantage of this time that we're at home and we have some time. Yes, and I I do have something else. I want another piece of advice to uh, to the audience and especially to younger generation is networking is number one to get you to the place where you would like to be. I mean, yes, you have to be brave to submit your application and make sure that your application is something that a, a potential employee employer is looking for. But um, talking about the ambassador, so I used to work for the British Embassy, Tashkent, and Barbara Hay was the first ambassador that I've ever worked with. And she was incredible. She was the, when they call, when they say a mentor, she was like a really, really great uh, mentor because she had, uh, she was a very hardworking, very dynamic, very strong person. And so it so happened that, um, she was posted in Istanbul, in Turkey, and she happened to work with our, uh, the then U.S. ambassador to, uh, to, to Turkey, Ambassador Ross Wilson. So Ambassador Ross Wilson, then he interviewed me for a couple of jobs, and, but then he was the one who referred me to my current position. So he met my chairperson, Carolyn Lamb, who I also admire, an extremely strong person, another mentor that I look up to, and a, an incredible woman who has taught me so much during these nine years of being with the chamber. Um, again, connections connections, networking, uh, whoever you meet. And that's very, again, goes back to our social interactions, right? If you meet someone on the street, be polite, be kind to these people, show the best of you, try to be your best because you don't know whether this person is actually going to be your next colleague or your next employer or the next recruiter. So uh, that's extremely, extremely important. And again, try to be your best, no matter what the challenges are, remain your calm, remember that everything is about the opportunity and the opportunity doesn't necessarily have to be at a special firm. It can be when you go to the store and someone is working there. Maybe it's a part-time guy who actually, who is a recruiter. And if he sees that you have good social skills, that might be an opportunity for you to, to join a, a, a larger, something larger and something bigger in your life. Well, those are big gems. You should write a book. Oh, no, I think I'll advice. leave it to you. <laughs> <laughs> um, all very, very relevant and great reminders of how we need to interact with other human beings and treat everybody with the same level of respect and care. Um, right. and, and your voice is so powerful, Elena. Please don't stop doing what you're doing and your smile just lights up a room and you're just amazing. So 
Thank you and happy, happy Asian American and Pacific Islander Heritage Month. And be well, give your parents a hug, please. And how do you say goodbye in, in um, So I'll say it in Russian, okay? The okay. <laughs> Oh, I wouldn't say the Sridanya. I will say so long. I will say paka paka. Paka paka is a more social kind of like a, a lighter okay. version, but meaning like I'll be back. We'll we'll I'll see you okay. again. But okay. thank you so much, Priscilla, to you for being the sister, for being also for being someone that to look up to. You are the lighthouse. Uh, I admire what you do for the community in, in Denver and Colorado. Actually, it was a blessing for me to meet with you and to learn so much with me, uh, so much from you. I remember the visit that we uh, made uh, when we were in Japan to uh, to a school, and you had so much interest and so many questions for the students. I think that sometimes younger generation, the younger people, they're not accustomed to getting so much attention from other people. And you showed so much respect to them, so much attention. I think that's incredible what you do. And uh, to all your students, I will say how lucky they are to have you around them and to have you support them. And so I hope they learn from you and uh, I hope to be of, uh, of help to you and uh, good luck to all of you with all your uh, plans. And uh, I know that your husband is a great musician and you've done some work there as well. You've supported him. So, um, so you have a Midas touch, I would say. Yeah. Um, yeah, thank you so much for, for inviting me, for giving me the opportunity and the platform. Thank you, Elena. And I'm going to give you my little Korean heart. All right. And okay. Thank you so Can much. I... And we will talk soon. Right? We will talk soon. Yes. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye. Okay. Sure. Bye-bye.